We have talked about Kirby and the Forgotten Land a lot, and pointed out a lot of cool unique details, and even talked about the story, and kind of wrapped everything up in a neat little bow. But that bow is about to unravel, because there is still so much to talk about this game, with so many theories and so many questions still left on the table. And one of those questions that we're going to talk about today, who is the main antagonist of this game, being Fecto Elphilus? Who is he and where did he come from, and why is he so angry to take over this Forgotten Land, and what was his purpose, what was his drive, what is the information surrounding this character and why is it just so powerful there's so much to uncover and so much to think about and talk about and we're gonna dive into the lore ourselves before we dive in and talk about all things fecto elphilis thank you guys so much for your support you guys have really been coming in with the likes the subscriptions and everything i cannot thank you enough we are on our road to 200,000 subscribers and let's see if we can get there how fast we can get there so if you're enjoying the videos on kirby you're enjoying all this information make sure you subscribe leave a like and stay up to date on all things kirby and the forgotten land and the course Nintendo in general. So let's rewind it back all the way to the beginning of exactly what is going on here. Well, one day in the Forgotten Lands, when all things were at peace, this mysterious creature appeared known as Fecto Elphilis. It immediately started targeting the world and the civilians and started destroying it from the inside, completely crashing everything there was from buildings to the Forgotten Lands itself. This creature was on a rampage to take over. We don't know much about Fecto Elphilis at all, and we're left to speculate what their main primary reasons for invading are. And really, all it's says is that it has a pure ambition for taking over worlds, and that's really all we have to go off of. It's just some type of being that has pure chaos on the mind, and the question is, why? But let's continue the story of Fecto Elphilus to better understand the creature. After he was invading, somehow the inhabitants of this world were able to capture them. Now this is the part that's kind of confusing to me, is how these people are actually able to capture this thing. This creature has the ability to manipulate space matter and teleport using dimensional rifts. One of the first times we've ever seen a being able to open up rifts by themselves without having some type of special equipment. But with that ability alone, it still amazes me that these people were able to capture them, which makes me think that this civilization was highly advanced. I mean, advanced enough to have the tech to completely trap this guy and put him in a stasis state, keeping them dormant in their own labs, which is pretty impressive if you think about it. This could have been the reason why Elphilus invaded in the beginning because he sensed this high technology and civilization of the people of the Forgotten Land and found this place just from how advanced they were. And maybe they even had technology to reach out and find other life and maybe they sent out a ping somewhere and this was the answer. This was the life that they wanted to search for and they're gonna regret it. Another reason to prove this is look at the battle arena that you're on at the end of the game. It's one of the highest points of the entire land. And if you look right beside the battle arena, you can notice a comms tower with lots of satellite dishes aimed towards the sky. Maybe this was the area in which the people here tried to discover some life far off from their land, and they sent out a ping, and this is who responded. Maybe that's why the battle takes place here in the first place, is because this is where he was pinged from, and this is where Fecto Elphilus originally came back to. Another theory is maybe he just appeared somewhere else in the Forgotten Lands, and this is where they called him to in order to trap him. Since the lab is directly beneath this area, maybe this was the best way for them to get him here. Using the satellites to call his attention, he arrives and somehow was able to capture him, then taking him directly down to the lab below. Well, after he was captured, the people of this land used him as their own personal lab rat. They began to test on him until eventually finding out that they could use his teleportation ability. They can now use dimensional rifts, which allowed them to teleport anywhere in space and time, which was a huge achievement for the people of this land, and they integrated it into tons of different technology that were not really talked about. But of course, there's lots of theories speculating that these are the ancients, and lots of those technologies were the devices that we've seen in the past that allowed creatures to use this teleportation ability, such as the Lore Star Cutter and also the Master Crown. Now we'll talk more about this later on when we actually talk about the residents and how they could connect and actually be the ancients, but this video is more focused on Fecto Elphilus. But eventually, after being experimented on too long, a warp incident occurred within this lab facility, which actually split Fecto Elphilus into two different versions of himself. They were now split into Elphilin and Forgo. As Forgo was still contained, somehow Elphilin escaped and made it to the world of the Forgotten Lands and had been missing for almost 30 years. But Forgo sat there, in his containment center, not moving, not doing anything, just in a dormant state, sleeping until it could finally be reawakened. Well, at least everyone thought it was just sleeping. Before we continue, I want to talk about the actual appearance of Elphilin and Forgo, as they both kind of resemble each other in a certain way. They both have round heads with these giant ears coming out the top, both having little bodies with a tiny tail at the end. 
Now they both still resemble a butterfly mouse hybrid, especially Elphalin, which is still part of Fecto Elphalis as a whole. Well, this does make me wonder, were they once some type of animal creature worked on or kind of put in a lab in the very beginning, maybe fused together to make Fecto Elphalis? I don't know. It is called the ultimate life form as if it was made. I know I'm bringing up a weird comparison, but so was Shadow. Shadow was also called the ultimate life form, which he was also made as well. So maybe this was some type of mouse slash butterfly that they experimented on and maybe combined the two types of animals and, you know, slowly started engineering this ultimate life form, giving it all these different powers and abilities. And eventually it became too strong and escaped. Now let me go in more detail about Forgo. If you look at Forgo, he is still the central unit of power of these two. And you can even see it with its overly sized head, which probably means it has a huge brain. And having this huge brain, once again, makes me think that maybe it was experimented on and made to have this gigantic brain in experiments. You can also see different veins going out throughout its head and throughout its ears, showing just how powerful the creature is and all of the different nerves and neurons firing off with its brain. Looking at its left side of its body, well technically our right side, you can see it's kind of melting apart. Obviously, we've seen this happen with Fecto Elphilis once Elphilin was removed, and this is probably the same situation here. Elphilin was removed, which put it in this dormant state as it was melting, but they were able to keep it contained in this central unit. After experimenting and testing on this creature, eventually the people of this world would be able to use dimensional rifts and travel to a land of dreams, eventually leaving this world behind and the animals that inhabit it. But for the time being, for some reason, the lab was used as a tourist spot as well to show the public what they have caught and what kind of rampage through their town and the new form it took as Forgo. People would come in and stare at this specimen all day, and I wonder if this was a way for the government of this world to raise money in order to produce even more electronic and abilities for them to harness with this creature. Maybe this was a way for them to fund their project and eventually be able to open up their own dimensional rifts with that funding. Eventually, the people of this world decided to leave and they were able to do so using this warp technology. And I like to also believe that maybe they created the lower star cutter and escaped with that instead of just jumping through a wormhole altogether. And they left into the land of dreams. Now, there's so many theories as to where they went and lots of theories even thinking pop stars since it is dreamland, but once again, and that's for another video. But one of the reasons why I think these people left is just simply out of fear of maybe something else happening with this creature in this containment, or maybe some other type of creature coming back. I mean, we don't know if there's other life forms like him, maybe a family, maybe a civilization, or maybe just the fear that, you know, Elphalin escaped, and they didn't know how dangerous that creature could have been, since it is part of the main specimen, it could have been just as dangerous, and they couldn't find them in the overworld, so they had to make plans to escape. It was just the best opportunity for them. Real quick, guys, before we continue, you talking about Fecto Elphilis, if you guys are planning on picking up Kirby in the Forgotten Land still and still have not purchased it, do so with my link in the description down below. I'm working with Best Buy and Nintendo to release with some upcoming Nintendo Switch games, such as Nintendo Switch Sports. Feel free to pre-order the game, whether it's digital or physical, through Best Buy with my special link in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for your support, and let's get back to the video. Forgo was then left here alone isolated from anything and anyone, in this lab, sealed away forever, sitting here, dormant, sleeping for the rest of its life. Nobody was able to reach it, no one's able to come near it. Well, that's what the people of this land thought was going to happen. Now at this time, Leongar and Clawerline are the leaders of the Beast Pack, and Leongar, I guess, decided to venture into this lab one day as it started to break down and decay and holes started to form within the lab itself, allowing him to enter that wasn't necessarily through the sealed doors, probably which allowed them in in the first place. Now it's not clear if Leongar entered on his own out of curiosity or if some type of mind control started to take place from Forgo, slowly leading Leongar to him. Somehow, Leongar found out that the people actually left this world to a land of dreams and got that miraculous power, which is the power to use dimensional rifts. We do know that Forgo can speak because he does so right before he breaks out to attack Kirby. So it seems as if maybe he informed Leongar on everything that happened, or maybe Leongar was the one that actually went around the lab and looked at past data that was left behind and saw the data logs of exactly what happened to this world. It seems that Leongar was saddened that the people of this world just up and left and decided to go to this land of dreams dreams with their miraculous power being the dimensional rifts. And Leongar wants to go to this land himself and maybe reunite with his people, and he's just kind of upset that they all left and left these animals behind, which is weird because you would think they'd be more happy to be able to kind of traverse this entire land and go anywhere they want and have anything they want now that everybody's gone. 
but Leongar is just not too happy about it. So he is tasked from Forgo to get everything in preparation for him to become whole again. So Leongar has to gather food, gather all the Waddle Dees that come through into their new land, and also to capture Elflins for him to be whole. The thing that's very interesting here is that Forgo is still able to summon dimensional rifts. Now the question is, how is this possible? Well, probably with the help of someone from the outside, and they probably convinced Leongar to open these rifts in order to help him out. The question is, wouldn't Leongar see this and know that he can already open dimensional rifts and just give him the ability to do so with his beast pack? Like, what's the point of this? Well, Leongar doesn't know what this miraculous power actually is. He never did see them leave in the dimensional rift, probably, and has no clue what this quote-unquote miraculous power is, but he wants whatever it is in order to get to this land. So, Forgo tricks him and already uses something that he could obviously give Leongar off the rip. He actually tricks Leongar by having him use the already miraculous power of the Dimensional Rifts to bring in the Waddle Dees in order to run the lab in order to give him more power, and Leongar obviously falls for it. But one thing I do question is once these Waddle Dees are captured, they're put into this facility where they're running on these wheels in order to power the entire laboratory. Now my question is, how was this even made? I know Leongar didn't make this all by himself, so how was this even possible? These actually had to be here, created by the people that used to live here. You can even see the piping and tubing leading all the way throughout the lab, which is some very high-tech stuff that definitely Leongar did not create. So what was the purpose of these chambers in the first place from the people that used to live here? Did they actually capture people from other worlds and make them run on these treadmills in order to power their lab? Were they using their own residence? What was going on here? It's really unsure. Once again, that's a time for another video. Another thing I thought of is maybe Leongar's mind has been corrupted from the very beginning. If you look on the side wall before entering the final boss arena, you'll notice some slashes on the wall, probably from the hands of Leongar. Maybe trying to escape the mind prison that Forgo was putting on him and completely losing his mind, trying to fight back but eventually lost. Maybe this was 100% mind control from Forgo and Leongar had absolutely 0% of what happened in this situation. The only thing that makes me think that Leongar was still in somewhat of control is the fact that his eyes and his body expression is normal. He's not being controlled or not looking like he's in some wild state the way King DDD was and some of the other beasts do in a later game. Halfway through the fight with Leongar, you can see him getting possessed and taken over, and now we see his eyes glow and a purple aura coming from him, all from Forgo taking over his mind from the background. Now, this might be what we saw the scratch marks on the wall, and as he kind of, you know, entered and exited his irate state trying to fight his mind, but eventually Forgo took over completely and is using Leongar as his host. It just shows how powerful this creature is. Even without Elflin, he's able to use his mind to manipulate others even while in containment. That's kind of crazy. We then see Forgo speak, but it's only through Leongar not through itself, and he talks in these very weird mannerisms that's just kind of roboticized and very just creepy zombie talk, and he does so once again through Leongar and not himself, which does still make me wonder how he was actually able to tell Leon about everything that happened. So maybe Leon was possessed from the very beginning as soon as he entered the lab, and ever since he entered that lab, Forgo has the ability to channel in and out of Leon's brain just like that without any problem. Then eventually, Forgo has had enough. He breaks free of his containment and starts devouring everything in this goop. This was his last chance to attack and destroy Kirby by consuming everything near him, including Leongar and the rest of the Beast Pack. But my question is, if he's able to break free and even mind control people from outside of the lab, how come he wasn't able to do this with the different types of population and the scientists that were here before they left? Maybe there are different parameters that were put in this lab to keep him at a resting state, but eventually as corrosion and time went on, this building broke apart and different pieces of those parameters failed, allowing him to be able to use more of his power and obviously mind control people from outside of the machines. It seems like time eventually decayed this lab and allowed this to happen. He then turns into the invasive species Fecto Forgo, which is this goop that corrupts anything that it touches. Now what's very interesting about this is we might get more insight about exactly how these beasts fell in line to follow after Leongar. Now, the description says their only refuge was the realm of their dreams. Those dreams spread powerful waves of psychic energy all over the world, slowly taking control of the animals they reached. Once again, just showing how powerful this creature is and the many different forms and psychic energy that it has to not only manipulate people that it touches, but also send out shock waves affecting the dreams and the mind of these creatures. It's absolutely insane. Eventually, it captures Elflin and becomes whole once again, being Fecto Elphilus, the ultimate life form once again. And this was the same form that actually invaded this world in the very beginning. 
and Kirby has a very intense battle with him until he's able to rip Elphalyn from his body. With Elphalyn gone, we can once again see Fecto Elphalyn start to melt, similar to the way the right side of Forgo's body was. But now, he still has enough energy to do a couple of last minute attacks in order to defeat Kirby. One of those attacks was to open up a dimensional rift big enough to bring in Kirby's home world and clash it with the Forgotten Lands, being Popstar. The thing is, is how does Fecto Elphalyn have any type of clue where Kirby is from? Why is he bringing in Popstar to crash? How does he know where Popstar is? And how did he open portals to bring in the Waddle Dees from Popstar in the beginning? My theory is that Fecto Elphilus actually knows that the people of this land used his own power to escape to this land of dreams being Popstar. And this is eventually where they went. So this is his kind of payback by killing Kirby with his own world and also getting back at the people that trapped him in this place and used his power to escape to Popstar in the first place. Not too long until Kirby uses his big rig mouth to drive a giant semi all the way through through Elphilus and completely defeat him. Now obviously guys, there's still so much for us to talk about. There's still so much for us to cover, but it's just so many details. It would be so long of a video if we continued. So make sure you leave a like, hit your notification bell to stay up to date on all things Kirby and the Forgotten Land so that you don't miss the part two of this video to find out even more information about Fecto Elphilus and more information about him and his new form after Kirby defeats him humiliatingly with a semi. If you guys have any more information to share on this part already of the main game with Fecto Elphilus and any other type of lore you guys think might happen, let me know in the comments down below and you could be featured on part 2. But thank you so much for tuning in and like always, I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.